What's up, you're here with Viral Cam TV and we're here with Sky Cam Burning. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves and tell what you do on the band? Jeff Guitar. Chris Vogels. Daniel Basses. Randall Drums. Dave and I do vocals as well. Alright, so you guys have a new member. Can you introduce him and Ooh. tell us how you're liking it together? This is Daniel Quick. He, plays, he slaps Ooh. the bass. I slap at the bass. My <laughs> God! I love that girl! <laughs> no, we love him, dude. Like. We yeah, couldn't ask. It's a whole different energy. How are you liking the band, Quig? I love the band. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. That's total lies. He only loves us from behind, not so much the front. He's been in the band for like four weeks, and he has he had to learn like eight songs, and he's, he's a part of it. Man, fuck it. Yeah. Four practices. I've known these guys for a long time. Um, been a good, big fan of them in the crowd, always screaming the words. Fun fact: some of us have dated his sister. Damn. <laughs> fun <laughs> fact. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Little FF. Some of them have also been denied by my sister. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh. Denied da dating purposes. Other factors, maybe not. Yeah, oh, sure. Shit. Yeah, oh, I doubt shit. it. Uh-huh. You're fine. But no, uh, right, no he, he's definitely added uh, you're an element that, that we needed for a long time into the band. Like, Fucking moves. Yeah, especially oh, for man. the live show. Oh, God. Motherfucker throws down. He can, you know, play his shit and still jam the fuck out. And that is... What we needed for a long time. Greatest thing ever is that I have to watch out for someone that's that active because that just makes me know that he's <laughs> yeah. doing his job right. You got a head stock coming yeah. right at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Catch yeah. a deep, he's right to his fucking face. face a couple times. I don't know what's gonna happen. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. like, well, I'm gonna catch something to the face. Oh, the spins, yeah. man. Yeah. Whack! Oh! Spins and jamming, it's gonna happen. Alright, so can you guys tell us in general what Sky Came Burning music may be influenced by? Well, music wise, I'd say. Well, Okay, so what do you mean by influence by? Do you mean like what the lyrics are about, or like what, just like what the type of music we play? What type of, you know, maybe the mood behind it, lyrics, whatever you may have, aggression. Very angry. Yeah. Chris, do you want to Very, uh, lyrically wise, very straightforward. Yeah. Um, pretty much every song we put out has its own, pretty much moral behind it. Everything has its own scheme as far as like the way you want to tell a story behind. Um, most of the songs we ever most, talked about. Mostly about standing up, yeah. being true to yourself, you know, don't give up. This is into your calling in life. Yeah. Never change. Never change. Change into the devil. <laughs> I will drink. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you guys just released the full length patent pending. Can you tell us a little bit about that production and how it may compare to any writing experiences you guys as a band or individuals may have had prior to this? Uh, being that it's a full length, we had to kind of put it out really, really fast. Yeah. Uh, and before we were doing EPs and stuff like that, five song stuff, and I think Patent Pending has nine songs on it. So it was, you know, pushing it out really, really fast because we had the songs written for a long time. Um, so getting them recorded, getting everything, uh, <clears throat> you know, put to scheme and, you know, all the ear candy type stuff recording wise, it was a little bit of a struggle getting all that going. Like, well, with digital recording now, you can get um, stuff done really quick, and that's why bands are putting out stuff like every yeah. six months, every six months, and you know that's what we're trying to go for now, even with full lengths, putting them out as soon as we can. Yeah, and also tying in with uh, like today's new age with recording, everything's like electronic now. The only thing that I would say, especially with him, because this last album I was able to use an electric kit and then just you know export the MIDI files yeah. to live drums or whatever, but uh, it was just. The first EP we did, it was really short. We didn't care. We were just trying to get something out, and that was like so fast. Like we didn't. Act. We asked him, like, don't worry about critiquing us. We're just gonna play it through, record it. The second time we recorded an EP, it was like really scrutinized. We were like, if we mess up, restart us, make us do it over again. <clears throat> like no mistakes. And so that was just five songs, just the full length with him. You know, like it was just grueling. Like he had to just keep playing it over and over again until yeah. he got it perfect and it there was no cut and paste like most bands do like oh just play it once and we'll fix it in editing it was yeah. you know if there was a little bit of a hiss after a breakdown i'm playing it again you know <laughs> which is good which is you know you want we were going for like a live feel because that was one of the things uh that we were going for in the early eps was a live feel but it, when it got mixed it turned into something that wasn't a good representation of us. And we're a live band above anything else. Um, if you don't like our live show, then we're doing something wrong, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of bands seem to live off of their studio recorded CD, and uh, to me, that's it's not worth it. I mean, live, it, we're all about live. Yeah. 
Yeah, you do put on one hell of a show. <laughs> thanks, 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 thank man. you thanks, so man. much. I appreciate that. And that's the whole thing. We try, we're still trying to find a good pro producer to make us sound, you know, how we sound live. And yeah. have that energy with it. It's still, uh, it's hard, man. It is. And then I want to say, like, in today's industry, you know, with everybody in the money situation, it's kind of hard for to get people to go out and actually buy the album. So, I mean, yeah. if anything, people want to come and see you live. So it's definitely important to put on a good show. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can get our album anywhere, yeah. pretty much everywhere online, like iTunes, Camp or not Camp or, uh, Spotify. Just anything that you can really think of online. It yeah. should be. I mean, you can hit us up on anything. Yeah, like, Unless I'm being ripped off somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can hit us, like, uh, any of us up on, like, social network, and yeah. we can mail it to you, you know, anything like that. Or, or hand deliver it. <laughs> Correct. I'm drinking for that. <laughs> All right, so do you guys label yourself to a certain genre or, quote, subgenre, and do you notice an effect it may have on the fans you may attract? Yeah, I'd say we definitely do. Um... Uh, we like to label ourselves kind of metalcore, and it, it it definitely brings in a younger crowd to our music, you know. And it, and it sounds shady, I guess, but you know, so, certain bands label themselves just metal, yeah. but and and those those bands tend to bring in an older crowd, whereas the bands that kind of put a core, which it is bullshit, but it's just. Putting breakdowns to metal makes it metalcore. You know, it's pretty much at combining hardcore and metal, which we do on certain songs. So, we're, I mean, we're lucky enough to have a bunch of songs that are kind of mixed in between that. Fluctuate a lot with yeah. metal. Like, a lot of our songs have breakdowns and lots of shredding parts. I mean, we've been called Texas Core, cool, believe it or not, you know, like with some of the stuff we do. So it's, you know, and again, like what we try and do is bring uh, an old school metal scene to new school metalcore, you know, try and mixture and that's pretty much what we do. So. It's, just, it's just fun to actually, it, it's actually just good to be adaptive to the crowd, like to actually get, grab any crowd's attention to what we're playing, to actually have them follow us no matter what we're playing, we can adapt to every crowd and scene that we have and just, it actually is really nice to have someone that can follow us no matter where we play. Yeah. And be, like it's 2013, like anybody can go on YouTube and, uh, <laughs> great dude, Anybody can go on YouTube and like look up their band's live show, you know. But it's it's you know people want to see a show and they you know if people come to see a certain thing, you know, we want to give it to them. You know, we want everybody to have a good time and like you know if we have to play you know certain songs to to care to adapt, uh, adapt out. Yeah, yeah, cater to certain people, then you know that's what we do. So be you know, we want everybody to have a good time. We have a good time regardless. Yeah, you God damn, we have a good time. <laughs> you know, I mean, we want everybody to have a good time and enjoy themselves. <laughs> I think one of the coolest things is I actually saw you guys for the first time last year at the Woe Is Me, Amir, and um, we came as Roman show, and I thought maybe the coolest thing is like, you notice with a lot of bands, you know, when they begin to label themselves to a certain genre, it, they tend to stay in a little box, you know, and the elements don't really switch out, but I want to say that you guys are very original with, you know, taking you. things from all types of different styles and combining it into one, and that's, you know, Really great thing coming up in the music genre. Oh, that's like, like, that's, that's, so yeah, that's, 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 that's yeah. like what we strive to do. We don't want to sound like anybody. We want to have. We want to cater to everybody, but we don't want to sound like anybody. Yeah. And there's yeah. just there's so many bands Thank coming you for out being at that show yeah. too. Yeah, that's no problem. Awesome. Yeah. That was a great show. Yeah, that was great incredible. Time. That's we wish we could play another show like that too. <laughs> Dude, we're about to. Well, <laughs> anyway, so, so uh, yeah, no. Um, Fuck, what was I gonna say, man? Some fuck. Sorry. Me. That's it. That's it. It's gone. It's gone. It's Can I have one little comment before we shut that? Before, yeah. before, uh, it's just the best uh, well, we can drink after this. Uh, the one thing that is probably the best compliment I think we've ever received as a band is actually when our last tour is um, when another band um, actually told us we're the most consistent yeah. energy and yeah. live performance. That no matter where we play, no matter what the crowd is, we play the same every show. Five or five hundred. Doesn't yeah. matter. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, even if it's a. Yeah, fake I mean, like, I wish you could have saw us at practice. You know, like, we just. Even at practice, we're just fucking freaking out. Like, I can't help it, man. I just love to play. And, like, his ass at practice, he's jumping like he damn near hits his head on that yeah. shit. I don't know if it was fucking. And he was saying, Patty's ain't like a little leprechaun just fucking walking <laughs> out. And it was pretty intense. Right. Dude, I'll talk. Let's talk. All right, so you guys are very familiar with the Baltimore metalcore and hardcore metal scene, whichever you may label it. Are you guys, do you guys at all agree with the statement that the Baltimore crowds are very rowdy, energetic, and rough? Uh, it, I'd, I'd say they definitely can be. It depends on the show, exactly. really. And like, the, and, yeah. my, and like, 
I like hate when, to say this, like but when you were at that show with uh, Amir. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so it depends on the show. It depends on the bands that are playing. You know, and it's like I'd say Baltimore. Actually, Maryland in general is very infamous for having a big mix of bands. It's not always just hardcore bands playing. It's like there could be two rock bands playing at the beginning, and then it goes to straight like deathcore, like kick, 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 blast beats and shit, and then it goes to hardcore, then it goes well, to you know. Kick, 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 kick. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, but with, with those types of shows, I feel like it's hard for the crowd to really get into it and stay consistent throughout the night. But it's like when there's shows where it's like you know, five good-ass heavy bands, then those shows tend to get pretty fucking rowdy. People get punched in the face. Exactly. Knocked out Dropped. Shit. Like, I'm it's, not gonna lie, kids love breakdowns. They I wouldn't even it. say ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. as soon as, you know, the, lots of kids, like, kids will watch, like, a lot of times, as soon as he sh- soloing, come up, do his fingers, and just watch some of the stuff we do. And as soon as a breakdown comes, they're going ape shit. You know, that's what they live for, you know, sometimes like that, but... You know, that's why we're trying to break out. And I, I wouldn't, sorry, um, I wouldn't say just Baltimore. I would say Maryland in general. Because, like, you go out to, like, Western Maryland. You gotta keep it and place. Western Maryland kids and, like, Southern, Southern, like, Eastern Shore kids out there, they go fucking ape shit. Yeah. Like, fucking, yeah. we just played a show. Uh, we just played a show in Annapolis. It was a house party. And Waldorf and yeah. fucking Frederick. Like, those kids out there in those places where, you know, they don't really have good venues out there. So we, they get yeah. stoked on shows. And those kids go fucking nuts, like, non Aryan shit. But it's not just Baltimore, it's all... Does Baltimore's fans' reaction to your prior shows keep you motivated to come back? And play absolutely. Yet? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we live by the statement five or 500, you know what I mean? Like, if it's five people in the crowd or if it's 500, I mean, it's it's basically the same show either way. Like, we, we do our thing either way, but when people are reacting to what we're doing, then it, it definitely keeps us motivated to give we them feed more. That. Yeah, yeah, you feed exactly. them. Absolutely. If people are, are just going ape shit and moshing to what we're doing, that's one of the biggest, you know, the things you can do for us. And it's awesome. It's we all like, it. yeah, it's all, if we're playing, we're playing music we love. And I know you've, wait, you've said this a bunch of times, you know, you feel the music, you know, you feel it. Yeah. And that's how you feel. You're playing Singing in words. front of if you're playing down here in front of just us five, or you're playing in front of five people. It could be a glorified practice, or you're playing in front of five hundred people. Yeah. You know, and it's not just uh, live too. Like I'd say, like we've had a bunch of people like send us Facebook messages or comments saying like you guys literally saved me. I was in a rough spot. Like your yeah. music has helped yep. me so much. It's like that type of stuff alone is just like wow. It's really humbling. And like I couldn't ask for any more. You don't know what to say to that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, when someone like, says that, wow, were you like literally about to kill yourself? Yeah, and our like, music that our music, you know, music like, saved you. That's, I'm just a crazy. regular kid who decided to, you know, pick up music because of this other guy for doing vocals. And you know, I've all we've always loved music. Where it's our lives, we've been in it forever. But you know, it's we all came together. Like we all grew. up, The only person, sorry, Dad, I forgot to exclude you. It's all good. All four of us grew up together. We went to school together, and we met Jeff. Thankfully, we met. Four more bands. Guitarist. Go check that shit out. Oh, yeah. the band's not out. <laughs> That's it. That's how we found you all the internet. <clears throat> and uh, you know, and it's just you know, we grew up together. We all love music. We all love the same stuff. We all want to do the same thing for a living. That and we just you know, like when people come out to our shows, they're not just coming to see a band play. You know what I mean? Like. After we play, but before the show, we're hanging out with people that come to see us because we we appreciate that. People that are still coming to shows, we really appreciate that, and we go out of our way to make them feel like they're a part of us and are not just you know hanging out trying to talk to someone that's in a band. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? We we want to make people a part of everything. And, I, I hate know. that. I hate like yeah. I, you know when bands just do their own thing or don't sit like their sit their band yeah. or sit in like literally and shit like uh, and like literally we're the loudest people in the venue. Yeah. And we've said it 800 times. Whatever, we'll say it whatever 800 it's load in times. time, we walk in, it's like it's quiet as shit. Bands are just kind of sitting around and we're just like, ah! you know, yeah. like, yeah. like we bust yeah. in there. People yeah. are like, holy fuck. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I came here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. The biggest, the biggest thing for me personally, from all these fuckers here, is that when we actually, before we even start the show and the whole entire room fills up, when you see that impact that we made on people, and they know us by name, like first name, they're calling out our names by first name because we're, we're literally interacting with everybody. Yeah. Before we even start the show, 
by far, it, it literally, it's, it's breathtaking. It literally will stop you right before you start. Like, you actually, like, kind of lower your head and it's like, damn, this is what's happening. It's the best thing you could ever feel in the world. It literally is the best feeling I've ever felt as well. And it really does give the band more personality, you know, to get to meet and stay in touch with the people that, you know, you come to see and it feels like your support is actually really helping out. Because, you know why, without, without them, we are nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Without, without them, just even buying, supporting, come to a show, even t-shirts, merch, anything, show to show, without them, this is not possible. And we've always said it, we will not be those assholes that, you know, just take it for granted, you know, and and we'll be, you know, my head's this fucking big. We will not be like that, you know? No matter what happens, we will always appreciate what it's been given to us. That's definitely, I feel like, Like, you if know, we see you at a show, if we're fucking huge next year, you know, if we see you two at a show, you're coming back. If I recognize you, now, you, yeah, I'm like, dude, fucking, yeah. come party time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hey, listen, Tom's a cocksucker. Because everyone knows that time. <laughs> By that time, you guys back. are like 29, so. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 Alright, so out of all the towns you guys have played in so far, have you ever... <laughs> I'm listening, hey, okay, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't fuck it, I can't, right, this son we of a are, bitch. We are forever Baltimore Sky Can Burn. We, we love, <laughs> we River love Park. it, that's probably, they, that, that is our favorite venue. We have venues. the most loyal fans. Favorites in the entire world, whatever. Yeah. But, if we had, you know, our, our home away from home is definitely West like Virginia. Like Virginia, West Virginia. Is. Virginia, West Virginia. They always show us, su like, such a good time, like, make us feel right at home. Like, we'll play there one month, and then next month we'll come back. Those same people that saw us, they'll they'll come back and remember us. And, like, that's that's what it's about. Yeah, the same faces. Yeah, so like, like, when are you coming back to West Virginia? When are you coming people back? people that are, like, no, yeah, like, like, they're real good friends. They want to come out, have us come out and come to, like, their... Birthdays, what was that you one show? Like... Stop jerking my finger off. <laughs> but the one thing, the one show we played in West Virginia, we went there. Some guy went out of his way, and spent two hundred fifty dollars to buy two kegs of Nat. Was it Natty fucking Bow? Did fucking no, it was Natty Bow. Yeah. Whatever, Natty Light. It was Natty Light. It was Natty Light kegs. He bought two kegs just for all the people to drink while we were playing. Like he was like, listen, this is what's gonna happen. I'm glad they're here. Just bought two days of his own money just so everyone could drink for free. Like that's 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 the shit. West Virginia is some of the most loyal people you'll ever meet. Awesome. Goddamn awesome. right. Hey, Always I have mean, a good time. Richmond, take a lamb of God, you think Richmond fucking Virginia. You know, it's like yeah. that's where they're from. Where we love playing there. And it shows metal, metal core, like it's one of the like there's a couple states that are huge in metal that just love and Virginia and West Virginia are as one. Well. And you guys are smoking on for having like a southern, a little bit of southern style in your music. Can you talk about that maybe a little bit? Southern style of music, um, well, it's with a lot of finger picking, shreddy, and it's all Jeff. And you talk, I don't fucking know. I mean, you know, I, I I grew up on different, a whole bunch of eclectic, different styles of music and stuff like that. And we try to incorporate everybody's influence into the band. And the southern kind of aspect is probably a little bit of mine mixed with. I mean. You listen to country and shit like that. Yeah. So it's like we we incorporate everybody's influence into the band, and so we get that whole kind of Texas core kind of Southern style yeah. to it. And, and that's just so, that's just a mix of everybody's yeah. influence. And we call it Texas core now for everything. We've but. gotten that so much, especially here in Baltimore. They're like, oh, fucking Texas core. I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll whatever. That's cool. Cool. Yeah, we're just starting up somehow, and it's gonna make its way somewhere. And we'll yeah. you know, it's the new it's the new label, man. It's yeah. the new subgenre. And the thing <laughs> is, like, even like what like you said, like um, a lot of people don't know is that I do love country music. I do. Um, the old I'm pretty sure they do tell. Well, the thing is, that's real, that's real fucking cute. Yeah. It is. <laughs> no, country. I mean, country style music has been in my hair, uh, my heritage for a long time. I mean, I was literally like born from Kentucky roots. And, hereditary. Like it is, it is. I'm, hereditary. Well, I'm, I'm in bred. That's, that's my fault. That that's my fault, right? To be bred. My lyrics, my lyrics do show for like what we have for as well, meanings, because of like country yeah. meanings. Shut the fuck up, I'm talking. <laughs> Yeah, give him some albums. Um, ass <laughs> that's Carol. <It's> Carol. <laughs> I can't see. This is what I gotta fucking deal with all day. What's that long? Yeah. I can't help it. But no, from real point of um, real point of view, is that tell McCluskey. Tell him to <laughs> tell him today, Junior. Now, country music has been my family for years, and the thing is, I grew up on metal and country my whole life, and like my lyrics show for it. <laughs> this guy here, look at him. <laughs> Just look at him. A midget could fuck his ears. I'm just saying, it's it's, it's horrible. 
Actually, it's dick plug bigger than yours. It is. It's facts. Those are just. Oh my god, know. what are we talking about now? Anyway, I don't know. We're on topic. Sorry, I'll Sorry. drink it. Go for it. I haven't got anything. I'm not sure. <laughs> Wait for you guys. Guys can pick one of your songs. Which one do you like to perform the most? Probably uh, our song, I Love What You Done With The Place. Just because it never really ends. You know, like it never really drops energy. I think the whole song. I would say, I mean, my personal opinion. I agree with you, and that's what I was going to say, but then I just thought about it after watching that video. And it's like, I definitely, honestly, Pat Penning is because we normally play it first. And so it's like that fucking beginning song. Yeah. It's like holy shit, I'm fucking pumped the fuck up right now. And it's just like you just start getting it on the first song, you know. You usually, kind of feel the crowd out on that first song. <coughs> like, Patent pending gives us that idea of how the night's gonna sound. So, so it's like it's the most uh, anticipated song of the night. So yeah. yeah. I don't know what would you say. Favorite song to perform? Bell buckle. Mm. Bell buckle is Bell just buckle it has too. that. We're right gonna do that chain, you know. I, I, yeah, it does it's have hard to say because I don't really have any to it too. favorites. Like, there's songs that I like playing more than others, but I still love the other ones. It's like Ambulance, Belt Buckle, and I Love What You Know The Place are like my top three. Ambulance, uh, that just magic. Like, because Ambulance. Ambulance was the first song that you and I started switching off and doing that stuff with. And then it just went from Ambulance to Belt Buckle to I Love What You Know The Place. And it just. <laughs> See, it just blows up from there, you know. We all, we all love that song. We all love that song. Those are great three songs. We're so passionate. We're, we're so passionate. 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 I think that's sufficient. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. All right. So you guys are currently unsigned. Is that at all a problem with media management, popularity, anything? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> no. With, with media management, like I'm sorry. If you need a manage, if you need a manager or a record label to take care of your media, then you shouldn't be a fucking band. It's it's, it's not that hard. We it's, got it. We got it down. We know what with, to do. Especially with technology, you're already logged into this shit. When you get on your phone, you're on Instagram. You're already logged in. Facebook, you're already logged in. All that shit. Twitter, you're already logged in. All you have to do, go on your phone and post a relevant post about yourself that you think people want to hear about. Boom! Your job is done with social media. <laughs> I don't understand exactly why people are like, oh, I want a manager to do this for me. It takes the personalization out of it. Like People feel like they're not talking to you anymore. They realize when it's robotic. Like, oh, they got some fucking... Because it says... You'll, you'll see posts where it says, you know, for example, it'll be like, Azalea Dying is up to this. Instead of saying, hey, guys, we're doing this. You know, we like we like to p post pictures. Like, when we went on tour, we were steadily posting a picture a day of what we were doing that specific day. And that was our first shit like yeah, that. And yeah, and on certain, on certain likes, it was like, uh, Jeff, for instance, it was like, listen, if you get us to 50 likes on this post, we're going to pick post a picture of Dave and Chris taking shit. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and we was up shit and now. And we was like, together now? Yeah, no, no. He shot on my lap and shit through my legs. I'm just saying. And that's the whole thing. Like Randall said, that's what it is. But the whole point of getting signed is that we get to more people to do that. And that's what helps us out. That's the only thing. And we that's being everything. personable with our yeah. fan base. That's if we're going to get management or anything, the only thing that I really expect from them is like, not expect, but like if we get like a bigger management company or a record label, the only thing I really want is good recordings and go on tour. You know, and it ties into earlier. Like we're very personal with our fans. We're, we're really good friends with a lot of our fans. And that's yeah. why we have a lot of people keep coming out. We're not just like, hey, thanks for coming. Go fuck yourself. But like, hey, yeah. thanks for coming. Do you want to hang out next weekend? Like, you know, it's stuff like that. The first question I usually ask, hey, you drunk? Like, yeah. I was like, oh, you fit right in, you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fun fact. Chris can chug a beer in, like, four seconds. Just check it out. All right, guys. <laughs> okay, so you guys have two box vocals. Does it add variety and does it make it smoother to perform as a vocalist in Sky Came Burning? What I have to say is both of us add our own little sauciness to each other. Like we feed off each other. If one falls short, other one picks it up. 
Um, but if we fall, both fall short, you know, then it, it is what it is. You know, we try and do what we do, and it, it help. It definitely does help if one falls short. You know, other one can pick up slack. On top of that, also having two vocalists, it's not like um, we have to cover all the parts, all the individual parts, as far as like when certain lyrics come in as far as like overlapping or anything, if I'm performing stronger on a certain part because you get that time to rest. You get that time to actually hit that attack on the mic before like, you know, I take a break while he's doing his vocals. I have time to rest myself to come back and attack my vocal parts as well. And the thing is the switch off is actually, um, a lot of people ask if we go to a click track. We don't. It's just hard practice. A lot of people are very impressed about the simple fact that we can literally be on time without being to a click track. Just this is literally just the hard work we put into it to, as vocalists. And I would also say Yeah, go ahead. Go, go for it. <laughs> go for it. Um I'd also say too it's it's not just about, you know, like them, you know, getting breaks and stuff. But like he's always been I've known him for forever. I was in a band before with him and he's like really fast, high pitched scream. One memory card later. Yeah. If you can continue. But uh so pretty much like not only with vocals does it you know, give them a break to rest. Con yeah, like give them a rest or anything. But a lot of a lot of bands that have two screamers, you know, like two vocalists, that's cool. Like if you have one dude screaming and one dude singing, that's awesome. But it's like when you have two screamers, make sure they're varied. Like, like he's he hits highs and shit, and like he hits like the mid range. Like they cover all the bases. It's not just like they sound exactly the same. I hate that. I hate that when I go see a band and there's two vocalists and they both sound the same. It's like, why do you have two vocalists if you both sound the same? You know, it, it, it makes no sense to me. I'll, I'll never understand it. But, yeah, that's, you know, I love his style of scream. It's really fast. It's high. It's fucking, his attack's incredible. And he's just like that fucking low guy just getting in there fucking all the time. I love that shit. I love them clashing with each other. You see them on stage, they, they like literally attack each other. They'll be staring at each other, you know, making fun of each other or whatever. And, and it's fucking awesome to witness. I, the way, I love the, way the two vocalists, I will say this, is that me and him almost have a competition on stage. It, it always happens that way. It's like, we literally look at each other as we're doing certain parts. And there'll be parts like even from recordings live that we'll just hit different notes just to fucking be like, Fuck you on stage, you know. Like, what bitch. you do? Yeah. Yeah. See you, son. I'm in front of a crowd. What you got, motherfucker? And then it's he'll come like, back and you know, it's like, just get the it same in. way. If you're at the gym and you're running next to someone on the treadmill, you're competing with them. You know, it's the same way. That's the only way. Other way I could back him, I could put it. Oh, yeah. That's how. It's like you and I, I at the gym. You yeah, know? like. You just got, I gotta get five more pounds. Yeah, let me, let me get, yeah, let me, hang on, you gotta, let me get a little heavier. Oh, you gonna, you gonna, oh, you, you, you gonna do it? You gonna do it? Yeah. <laughs> David is so. damn slam music. So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a slam band's fan. Slam anyway. slam band, you fan. <laughs> so that's how, that's how it is with Chris and I. We, you know, and it's, it totally helps. So, most bands have two guitars, but you guys only have one. Would you say there's more work and originality being put into the guitar tracks? Um... Uh, I don't know if there'd be more originality. Like, I don't know if I'm doing any more than anybody else is doing. Dude, like, you are. You, you are. really are. Well, fuck off. You, you know, when, I, when you play chords, most of the metal bands nowadays are doing one finger chords and stuff like that. And I try to just branch off and do, I'm getting to the nerdy side of guitar, but, you know, I try to do, you know, thirds and fifths and, and just different shit along that um, to make the chords sound more full. You know, there's just ways of going about it. There's ways of doing... Uh, Micing up your cab live, you know, that makes you sound bigger in the mix. It's like those types of things. Like now with Quig, we're doing stuff to make him sound bigger, to make him bigger in the mix. Um, so, I mean, to say that I'm doing more than anybody else, or if I'm doing different stuff, like maybe, I don't know. But, you know, we just, you know, we know that uh, we're only working with one guitar player, and that's what's on our plate, so we just try to sound as big as we can with and you know work with what we have and on, yeah, and on top of that just having one guitarist like honestly um he knows exactly how to fill the parts that are void like all the parts that are empty he knows exactly what he has to do with his talent he has to fill all the parts that were maybe two guitarists would have to do that part i mean for him to cover all the parts as far as one guitarist goes yeah. it's actually pretty amazing to see how like some people are like oh we need two guitarists you sound so much better two guitarists so it's like we've had one guitarist the whole time it's and so it actually covers it, it's so much it, the thing is not only that but when that you have two too, guitarists yeah. if one part if one person out of two guitarists is off the whole song's off but if you have one person that can cover all the parts and mic it this like, you know a different way here it sounds like we have two guitarists either way yeah. Yeah. What, what i really wish could happen is that if bass 
could sound like another guitar but still be bassy. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like I think about that all the time like, too, dude. Because like his parts are so fucking clean and tight, and it's like like we, that's what we've always been told. And that's something that we will never let go down the drain is how tight we are. Like we practice our asses off every fucking week of every month, and it's like. People are like, you guys are so tight. It's like, how many times do you practice? And we're like, twice a week. And they're like, holy shit, we practice That's why a lot of people say that we don't practice with click track. And it's don't. like, if we were to add another guitarist, our parts wouldn't sound as tight. And it's like, I listen to, a, like, some bands pull it off. Some yeah. bands definitely pull it off. Like, Unearth. Yeah, I'll fuck oh, it. Dude, <laughs> but a lot of yeah. other bands, like, you, you hear them with two guitarists, and you can barely hear, like, the, the different really cool shit that the guitarists are doing, you know? And it's like, if we could have just a bass, like, a bass sound... Because, like, when he's doing his solos, all we have is his bass on yeah. there, which kind of blows, but, oh, I just wish there was, like, a bass sound with fucking guitar, too, you know, that would be awesome, but what can you do? And that's the thing we have without practicing or playing to a click track or anything or a backing track, you know, it doesn't have a rhythm guitar behind it, you know, but that's what we sacrifice with him, you know, not playing, we, we have our, our energy with it. Yeah, the cool part I'd be surprised to see you guys only have one guitar. So. Well, the thing is, everyone sees one guitar to get let off. Like, you know, yeah. they're like, like, oh, God, this is going to be generic fucking 4-4 four, four the whole time. And then when they hear us, they're like, oh, no, what just happened? I'm surprised. And on top of that, like, a lot of people ask us if we play to a click track when they don't, they hear that we don't play a click track, we just practice I'm that much. Fuck no. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like you play to a click track and like, and like there will be headlining bands asking us. It takes away from the feeling, man. And the thing is, like, that's like, like, like our new bassist, he used to play to a click track yeah. and he's like, he's getting it, man. It's like, it's feeling, man. You feel it so much more when you're not like worried about falling off of that click track. Like, fuck that. But we're not talking about click track. Yeah. Let's continue on. Yeah, like, I mean, I've had people tell me before that like, <laughs> when I go into like a solo or whatever and there's not the rhythm guitar there, a lot of people don't even notice it. Like that's what that's what I've heard. I mean, personally, that they're like, you don't even notice that there's not a rhythm behind it. You know what I mean? Because it's still on point or whatever. I yeah, mean. and that's like when I said you guys carry a pulse, yeah. even though, you know, it's pretty fast paced. I think the guitar, it's really surprising that with one guitarist, you carry the rhythm and the aspect so smooth. Yeah, and on top of that, there's enough distraction on stage as far as our energy level that it doesn't matter if there was behind one or not. Yeah. The thing is, everyone is you know, Jeff doing a solo while the rest of us are just having fun. Yeah. Everyone knows that there's a band that has fun, you know why? Because we enjoy what we do, and we do it to the fullest. And it helps set you. And it helps set you. And I gotta say, Jeff is by far, like, one of the best guitar players Hands I've down. ever heard. Like. Like I, I keep the pulse, but the riffs that he cry, makes bitch. up, cry. The riffs that he makes up are just like they're fast, but he plays it so well. It's like dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig 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 like I fucking hear his picking, and it just make like I hear his picking matching my double. And you picks, feel you know? his and emotion on the picking. On top of that, like on top and of that, and he's jamming out the whole fucking time. Well, how the <laughs> fuck are you playing that? He's playing a solo, jumping, and he's still not fucking up. I'm like. Here's a fun fact, after he leaves here for practice, he goes home and plays <laughs> for four hours. Another another four three, hours two to three hours after he practices. Takes you a fucking granola bar break. break. Yeah, it makes perfect. Actually no, he takes a whole DiGiorno pizza break. Yeah. He eats He's eating a whole family sized thing of fucking Stover's lunch. He's got the metabolism saying, of a fucking rabbit. So, I'm, I'm fat as <laughs> fuck. I can't fathom that idea whatsoever to fucking eat a whole entire nice burger. Nice usage there, pal. Fathom. Chris, Chris, I missed that shit. Yeah, you alright? Are you fine? <laughs> I've been drinking my intelligence juice, so I'm just saying. <laughs> alright. Alright, so you guys played at Warped Tour. Is that an experience to compare to any other? Uh, first of all, like, when I got the email we were playing the Ernie Ball stage on Warped Tour, at work, I almost wrecked my company vehicle. <laughs> like, literally cut across four lanes of traffic to go into, like, a private driveway just to get out and walk around. To be like, oh, we just won this shit. I called Randall and I called Dave. Don't 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 lie to me. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I, 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 Randall, what the, what's going on? Are you, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, we just we're playing Warp Tour. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, we're playing fucking Warp Tour. Like I'm literally my 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 BBMs are fucking two twenty. <laughs> um, I'm literally having a fucking small stroke. I'm pretty sure. And I called Dave. Dave's like. It's bullshit. We're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, uh, be, be real, Chris. It's bullshit. Next thing you know, we're sitting in fucking line at the warp tour waiting to get in. And wow. we, 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 we actually <laughs> waiting in line Before to load everyone. in. It's cool though. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely a We're actually playing next to the line that was waiting to come in. 
That was probably the coolest part. Of it. Just fucking the whole line. Like we're the was first band in, was right next to the Ernie Ball yeah. stage, and like we're just playing, and there's like you can see kids through the fence just coming in. Like the front gate's right here. We're like right here. That was the coolest thing about that. So how's it looking out for you, for you guys to be on the lineup for this year? It's random, man. I would say, like, last year we kind of forgot about the competition, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. it did change the competition. There's a lot of fucking vote-for-vote vote bullshit going on, like bands would, you know, hey, I'll vote for you, you vote for me back, and yeah. we'll just make sure we're up in the top 100, because the way it's decided is the top 100 vote getting bands, four of those bands get picked. So if you guys are wondering why the quality all of a sudden changed to shit, we're finishing the interview <laughs> on what we have here now. So the next question is, are you guys into the party atmosphere? We're into... Nope. <laughs> I'm, into, like that. I'm into drinking. I'm not into the party. Yeah, actually, we really don't party that much. We don't go to, like, parties. We just... We make... Don't get me wrong. If you invite us to your party, we'll be there. Yeah, but, uh, we make the party. Like, we make our own little parties here and there, you know? <laughs> That's like what we say when we go to venues. We're the loudest people there. Like, you know, oh, yeah. fans will sit at their table or sit on their trailer oh, for us, right. whatever. Like, uh, we mingle. We love to talk to everybody, fans, other bands, parents. Like, we don't care. We're know? a drinking band with a metal problem. You know? Exactly. You know, we love we love people. We love to mingle. That's just who we are. And no one can change it. Yeah. Fuck off! Fuck <laughs> off! <laughs> Loudest people there. Right. Damn son of a bitch. <laughs> Alright, so over the years, has your vision of a career in the music business changed at all? Mine hasn't really changed. Mine started off as knowing that this was going to be grueling and very hard, no money, and... It's like just from watching interviews with other, like, national headliners, international headliners, they're always like, you know, you gotta pay your dues, and they're grueling, you gotta keep a job, and a lot of people have a misconception where they think, oh, you've toured, that must mean that you don't have a job outside of this. It's like, no, we all have jobs. I have a fucking, I have to go to work, I have to wake up at 6 a.m. tomorrow to go to work, and you go to work. And it's like, I try to put as much money of, the, of it that I make I try to put as much money in it that I can, but you see no return, really. The only return that you see is just whatever you make, uh, put back into it for t-shirts and, you know, more CDs, anything like that, the gas, the, the joy of the air and, and you know. the joy of playing a show, exactly. seeing the fans. That's what I'm saying. Like, that, that's more of a reward than, than monetary value. It's just like seeing people coming to your shows and coming to see you. Like, that's, that's where the reward is. Like... Hey, you know, if we ever make any money at it, that's awesome. That's icing on the cake. But, like, as far as I'm concerned, if we can just make, you know, work a job and then play music, that's fine with me. Like, I, you know, I just want to play music. I just want to break it. even. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's always even. been our yeah. break just, even. If I can make as much, if, like, even if I'm famous, if I don't care if I'm just making as much as I'm making right now at my job. Just so I'm making as much as I can live off of. I'm fine with that. I don't want to fucking go on tour all across the world and make millions. Well, of course I do want to do that, but <laughs> yeah. that's not like that's like not my vision right now. My vision right now is just, hey, if I can just go out there and fucking make a living doing something I love, I'm fucking happy. Twenty five thousand dollars a year. Like, put put in perspective, is the last tour we actually did. If we didn't have merch, we wouldn't have made it. Home. Oh yeah, we, yeah. we most like there was like a our merch sold that. our way. Home. Like, we got back with, like, $35 in our pocket. <laughs> yeah. Out of Amongst a, us. A, a, yeah. A, what was it, 15-day tour? 16-day tour? Like it was 18. Uh, 18, well, whatever. Whatever the tour dates were, like, that's exactly what we got back was with $35. And on top of that, he broke his fucking tail light, mm -hmm. which, I mean, yeah. shit happens. I'm just glad I got family in the South, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't for him, we would have been... Would've been yeah, we would have been like, sleeping in like uh, I would have been like on Jeff's like lap laying vacation. down. Yeah. Uh, okay, how is it to be on tour? What do you consider an essential? And do you guys have any places you wish to tour most? West Coast. West Coast. Oh, I want to go. To, I want to go to Australia. Yeah, Australia. The essentials to be on tour is baby wipes. The baby, yes. The big guy over here. Yes. <laughs> nice. Baby, baby wipes. wipes. Clean the nuts. Baby wipes, and Clean. I really wish I would have brought it. Like, normally I have, like, a small towel that I play drums with just to wipe off the sweat. Bring a shit ton of those, because <laughs> I, was, I was the fucking, since I'm black, I was in the back of the shop. 
Like, we don't have a van right now. We have his truck, which That's has, a, like, a back SUV. area. No seat. So I kind of made, like, a fucking hotel den area in there. <laughs> and it's like, when you're sitting there, and it's, like, fucking 95 Dude, degree weather. Dude, it was weather, hot as shit. You, you just got sweat Florida. and sweat. You're just like, if I had a towel, I would have been fine. I just wiped it off. You just got, like, a quarter cup of water to yeah. wash it down. <laughs> yeah, at least a quarter cup just sitting back there just swishing around. Yeah, but, yeah, baby <laughs> wipes, <laughs> towels, water. Oh, like, on top water, of that, water, water, touring, water. what a burger. Hydrate. What a burger, dude! What a burger, dude! No, we're never doing that again. Yeah, we're never doing that again. Their triple cheeseburgers are the shit. No, I'm just and saying. See, you're the only. No, you got a triple then too. Didn't you? I got a triple. Yeah, Fuck yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a double. Yeah. Biggest no, burger I've ever seen. This man slept for sixteen hours. This fucking wide. <laughs> it's this wide and like that fucking thick. And that brings up the and question. And it's like at three in the morning. What is the going to the bathroom like on tour? It sucks. Shit. You shit in the weed. I have you're killed a weed. lot of weeds on 95. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> you're in a band. You're in a band. You know this. Go to a venue in like the worst place and have that feeling like, oh, I got shit. You got bubble guts. <laughs> like, you got bubble guts. guts. And you went like, man, do I hold it? And like, oh, shit, I can't hold it. I have to go to the gas station down the street because this fucking venue sucks. <laughs> or do you hold it till the next venue hours later I'm, or to a hotel room? I'm pretty or... sure I killed a couple Black Eyed Susans via shit. Not to mention, <laughs> not to mention <laughs> tour, consists of, tour consists of really shitty food and a lot of alcohol. Yes. So when you combine those two things, your stomach is fucked. You know, like, you need you a good place out, to shit you sweat and you out don't all get the it. <laughs> with your body. It's like a lot of times it's like sure. someone goes in there, it's like, all right, it's your turn. It's like, we're all in a line ready to go take a shit. It's like, fuck, it just keeps getting worse. Yeah. You know, like, no, it's, it's all. We did that. Yeah. Bathroom. As a matter of fact, uh, gas station bathroom. A friend of ours, we played a venue. It was just called Boobs and Breakdown Tour. It was like a friend of ours band, um, Jan Sonner. It was a like, weekend war kind of thing. A uh, friend of ours, Mike Locke, actually ate some bad Chinese food, and like a bone got caught in his digestive system, and he's now shitting blood profusely. Ooh, you know? you're yeah. Dead, well, yeah, yeah, surgery. surgery, like shit removed. Mm-hmm. Like it, you gotta that's be what we careful do for with fans. You know? we, we gotta do is we shit blood for fans. I'm just saying <laughs> that's, that's what we do. That's the moral of the story. <laughs> yeah, we shit blood for fans. I'm just saying. Don't eat a wing hang. <laughs> <laughs> or what a burger. Yeah. Trust me. Don't what do a burger is this shit? Dude, just, I was blacking out for 13 no, hours. You were in a fucking coma. I was drank like 10 beers, ate a water burger. I was gone till Tennessee, bitch. So, <laughs> <laughs> we in, didn't I wake up once. We were in Pensacola. I was in Tennessee, bitch. We were in Pensacola, Florida. He woke up till we were like in West Virginia. You woke up in sweat. Done, dude. No, no, I woke up in Tennessee. Remember, that's when the fucking faggots broke up on me. Shut up! So if you guys can describe your stage presence in four words, how would you describe it? Energetic. Four words. We got four people. Energetic. <laughs> you got four syllables, you're right. No, I'm saying we got four people, I'm saying one word. Go. go. The best shit ever. That's all four. That's Hold on. Four, four words! Four. Energetic! <laughs> Say one word. Oh. Um, I don't know. I don't know it's one. You got energetic. Right. energetic. Goddamn. Like but because you say that, that fucking... Shit! <laughs> Badass. Well, there you go. That's there one. You go. Long hair, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. Talking about- All right, so what's your guys' wildest stage moments? <laughs> For me, was my nose bleed on stage profusely. It was just a blow. That was a gusher. Yeah. Like we it still have stop. blood on our light boxes from. His- it's I have blood on my snare drum from that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was just going. It just wouldn't stop. And I played like that the whole set. For- and no, the cool thing about that though is that there's three bands where their vocalist had a nosebleed. Yeah. And it was all back to back. It was us, Honor Crest, and then Dying Arms. <laughs> it's like Dave had a nosebleed, it, it, Honor Crest had a nosebleed, and then the Dying Arms. Well, Dying Arms, man. he hit his head and his head yeah. was bleeding. And then Honor Crest, I, I, I guess he, he had, had a nosebleed. Really I, I think he fucking like. Yeah, oh yeah, he rocked his face. face. <laughs> but we uh, it was like a chain reaction once one of us, I started yeah. and the other I was like, dude, how funny started. is that going to be when In Dying Arms has a fucking bleed yeah. and they fucking and he bleed blood on stage? Yeah, <laughs> like, his head fuck, open, man. Most, what most about memorable you? was probably Ice Jam when we played the second day and the whole entire, like, uh, what was the talking head side filled up and I got in the crowd and some guy grabbed me to come screaming in his face. He grabbed me and then I grabbed my throat. <laughs> and I brought him towards me and he couldn't breathe because I was squeezing him so tight and he was trying to scream the words with me but he's like, oh. <laughs> I, was like I was like oh shit I gotta let go of you because I'm, I'm legitimately killing you as I'm doing it and that's that probably the stuff. most memorable because he was trying to he was like oh. I don't know 
I don't know if it is for you, but when you almost fell off stage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was it? No, we, uh... No. Shut up! Shut up, Chris. We, yeah, so, <laughs> when we opened for a mirror and uh, we came as Romans, like, I... Literally, it was a sold-out show at Ramsey, probably 2,500 people there. Um, I had my wireless on, and I was up at the front of the stage just doing stupid shit or whatever. I jamming. literally almost fell off the stage. And, like, I've seen <laughs> face plant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whoa! Like I've seen people fall off the stage, and I wish the story was more interesting. That I fell off the stage and busted my fucking face That's open, but like, simple. yeah, I just I almost fell off the stage. And it's on video. You can you can look it up on YouTube. Shut up, right on still there. Mine's probably the knot point show that we played at Ramsey, oh. where my fucking beater actually came out of my pedal, so I was stuck with one pedal for like until I fixed it. it yeah. was, but it was like right at the beginning of the show. Like <laughs> I was like, I'm like, dude, dude, and I'm like, dude, 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 dude. I'm like, what yeah, the fuck's going on? Know exactly. <laughs> the actual <laughs> beater <laughs> just fucking fell right out of the fucking holder. Got to like, slide it the whole show. Fucking a, okay. I guess I'm doing fucking thirty second note fucking <laughs> fills from now on. Like it was fucking awful. I just. And then, like, it took me forever to fix it. And then, like, I'm, like, sitting there, I'm sweating, just, like... And, like, yeah. there's, like, hundreds of people out there just, like... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not amused. I'm yeah. like, fuck. A fair amount of Jeff has actually had Angel's Rock Bar. He slipped and fell and busted his ass. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was, like, yeah, he was, like, yeah, like dude, dude, dude. And his fucking feet left. And <laughs> actually, no. He was on his back. Moment. He was on his back just getting... My favorite moment is... <laughs> That same show at Knob Point, and this was before Chris actually worked on his stage presence with talking to the crowd. So, like, we were just dumb and stupid. And there's, like, Chris just going off on his, like, normal psycho babble. Chris bullshit. has rants. And this kid out in the crowd is like, shut up! He's like, fuck you! And this kid goes, fuck you! Come on, Chris. Shut the fuck up, play music! I was like, Fuck you! Like, you can't crowd like that, man. You cannot do that, man. He's like, fuck you! Like, stay right. I was like, fuck you! I'm like, Holy shit, man. Yeah. Like, you don't do that, man. Uh, shit. He's sorry. worked on it since, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I, that kid was like, I, fuck I, that, man. <laughs> Never. I'm gonna tell everyone about this bullshit it was fucking thing. He was like, shut the fuck up. I was like, fuck you! <laughs> and I pointed right at him, but he was like, you kind of studied, looked at me. I was like, I was like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm talking about you! I was like, I oh, guarantee. fuck, this is the worst show I ever. Guarantee. That was a bad show, dude. Yeah, we didn't yeah. have a bassist. Yeah, no yeah, bassist. Yeah. My pedal fell out. He's cussing out the crowd. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that was fucking I awful. guarantee if that shit ever happens again, Chris will still say, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you! Yeah, hey, you guys suck! Eat a dick! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Needle dick! <laughs> All right, so you guys have played with some pretty big names. Have you been excited to play with any so far, or which one have you picked out to be your favorite? I mean, my my personal favorite was uh, when we played at Uproar Bye with far. um Seven, uh, Dust. Both, uh, Seven Dust. Yeah, when we played with Seven Dust, so, like that's a band that we can all kind of agree on that that have have influenced us personally. I grew up playing like, from that. Yeah, nope. exactly. So it's like we to play with play. them and uh, after we played, uh, Lejean, the lead singer of Seven Dust, he came up to us. He, and he was like, were you in that first band? And we were like, yeah. And it's like this big black dude. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. With his red leather like, pants. Oh. He's fucking huge as shit. But he was like, yeah, were you in that first band? And we were like, yeah. And he was like, that was fucking awesome. I want a t-shirt and a CD after, you know, I go perform on stage. I'm like, I know who the fuck you are. I know you're about to go on. You're fucking from Seven Dust. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave us a shout out. And he gave us a shout out on stage. Yeah, like, how about that first fucking band? They fucking the drummer, us. The drummer, the drummer, the drummer Morgan wore our t-shirt. On stage to promote us, like like that band Sky Came Burning was awesome. Give them a round of applause, and everyone starts clapping. I'm like, and on top of that, the guys from Seven Dust after they were done playing, there was a kid in the crowd that had like Down syndrome with his like father. Yeah, like saw them like like the kid with Down syndrome and his father like playing outside. I was like, listen, after stage, let them backstage. Like was talking to the kid with Down syndrome and like his father, and it was like just like want to get to know the kid better. Like yeah. real genuine like good gentleman. Like literally give a shit about their fans like and for us as far as like role models is like someone that we looked up to forever it like made a big impression on us like these guys and, and by far like morgan the drummer was gonna die that day he was like listen this is the day i die he's yeah, like i'm he so get hooked up to yeah. IV. he was on a stretcher and he was shit. like, he's like I'm, and then he apologized was like i'm sorry for like literally like i'm sorry that we missed your show i'm sorry i missed your show i was like dude no problem um it's uh all the bands we play with, big name bands, I mean, we play with Ice Jam, we played Uproar, we played Warped Tour, and it's incredible to even think that we've played with all these 
huge name. So many of the bands that I've looked up to and I've listened to Love today. them. Like, like, like we just played, awesome. like, we just played with Mr. The Apocalypse, and they are some yeah. of the most incredible musicians. Like, they're not bigger up there, but they're the tightest, most, some of the most The first time I saw them was with Lamb of God Periphery. Yeah. That was a badass show at 9.30 for the music. Yeah, it was your mate. And, uh, like, we talked to them after the show, and they were like, dude, we, you, like, their drummer is one of the best drummers I've ever seen. And he was like, dude, your drummer was awesome. Like, I told him after that when I was talking to him, and Brent was like, holy shit, that is, that is awesome. That's so crazy. Like, but, but like, I, I gotta say, the uh, Seven Dust, yes, absolutely. The first big name band we'd ever played with was Beneath the Sky. Yeah. yeah. They're fucked. They're real old. I don't know. You know Beneath the Sky? You ever heard of them? I've heard of them. Check yeah. them out. They're fucking. They're, the shit. they're real old school. Like, we fucking listened to them for a long fucking time. Like, like years. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, like, we, it's like, we played with them and they were cool as shit. They were really cool. Like, we were drinking beers on our belt. Yeah. yeah. And they, like, they came to Maryland and, like, we played our set and they're like, how the fuck are we supposed to follow that? And it's like, when you hear one of your, like, Bands, you fans that you to. bought their album and you know are like kind of higher up. When you hear them say to you, "How the fuck am I supposed to call that?" It's like, dude, like stop, please. Like, that is like, like way damn. too flattering. You can't be saying shit like that. I'm getting a boner. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm getting get a boner. <laughs> Broder, yeah, go get your brother somewhere else, faggot. <laughs> all right, all right. If, if you guys had to tattoo any of your lyrics to yourself, what would you get a tattoo of? This is our defiance. I would say these are the words we tell from the heart. Never, it's from, it's from the same never, song. Never this is, yeah. The thing is, this is our defiance. Um, these Don't explain the it, just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. This is our defiance. Um, this is our defiance. This means this is what we're standing for. This is exactly what you guys are going to listen to. This is exactly why we're singing what we're singing. This is the band we created to make you listen to what we're talking about as lyrics. This is our defiance. I feel the same way with like, these are the words we tell from the heart, never to be overcaught. Like, I love that fucking line of Pat and Penning when you guys are fucking saying that shit, man. It's like, that's ex like pretty much what you're explaining. It's like, this is what we fucking are. Like, these are the words that we're telling from the heart. You know, you can't teach this shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like. It can never be overcaught, which means you can't say this enough. Which what means you? it can never be overtaught, which means we can say this as much as we want, but it will never get old. Jeff. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's good. I'm. I'm all the above, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A B C D E on a scantron. <laughs> mm. I'd say the same thing. All of our all of our songs have the same. You know, mostly all of our songs have the same. Just you know, word. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Thanks for asking. Cool. Okay, if you guys had to be hunted down by any of the three movie characters, who would you pick? Voldemort. Terminator Voldemort. from the Terminator. <laughs> You want me to react that one? No, 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 no
What would you have them do in your band, and who would it be? Chris Farley, just be there. Oh. <laughs> no, Farley, <laughs> cowbell. Yeah. Yes. 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 He's gonna have his head ass like, yeah! <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Oh my freaking god! <laughs> that would be him. <laughs> and uh, if we could do an acoustic set with Johnny Cash, just come out and cuss at everybody. Yes! Johnny, Johnny Cash is looking. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Cash, exactly. just to get the finger. And at the end, we'd all chant, walk hard. Exactly. We'd walk hard. Walk hard. <laughs> we good with that? Alright, right, next uh, question. Cool. Cool. Alright, can yeah. you guys attempt to say Sky Came Burning Backwards? Rail's got it. Ninrub E Mac Geeks. Fuck off me. Got talent for things. Yeah! Alright. Goddamn. What's your favorite drinking game? Circle of Death. Actually, no, Johnny Walker. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, Johnny Walker's pretty good. Like. Johnny Walker is just pretty much you flip a card. What's the card say out of what number? Take that many drinks. Yeah, yeah. true. We just. I like, uh... My favorite game is when Chris has stupid stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, buddy, because I make you everyone drink. What? There we go. Yeah, exactly. Case of porn. They're all drinking right Shotgun now. beers <laughs> with, the uh... Pop Society. Pop Society. Ooh, I don't want to know about that. Yeah. Right. Gotta drink with the left hand. That's one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah. We get people... Don't drink with the left hand. You gotta... <laughs> shotgun beer, shotgun beer, beer, something like that. Yeah, quit figuring it. Shut up! Uh, can you guys tell us what to expect from Sky Cane Burning in the near future? A bunch of badass type of shit! A oh. Grammy! <laughs> <laughs> now, hopefully, we get signed, we tour some more, yeah. we have, you know, play more shows. I, can't, more I am you. so excited for our new music. Like, I can't wait. Like, Maybe we, we don't have the money to go out and record another badass record again. It's just like, I can't wait to just get picked up. Just have a little bit of money thrown our way so we can go out and afford to pay for ridiculous fucking sounding recordings, you know? And it's like, once because our new shit is so fucking awesome in my opinion, mm -hmm. I can't wait to release that in the future. To see a lot that. more smiling faces from all of you about our new music. That's my fucking hope is. Alright, um, do um, you guys have any last words? I jerk off constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank all our fans and everyone supporting us and you guys for doing this interview. Thank you so much to us. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Guys. Guys. you guys get, so get, get in here. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Right here. Right here. Three seconds. That's it. 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 That's Thanks for watching. Thank goddamn! 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 Put your fist down, bitch. You ain't doing shit. <laughs>